Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and right here I have a dye bath with Rit hand dye that I mixed and started with 15 cups of water, one 50 gram packet of the black dye, and four tablespoons of non-iodized salt. I have already dyed a little over 200 grams of yarn in this pot. I want to use this dye bath to try to dye a twisted hank of 100% cotton yarn. Technically, I have dyed this a blush color already, uh, but that was an experiment just to show how little color you can get when you try to dye cotton yarn with Kool-Aid. This hank of yarn is dry and it's twisted, so there is some resist. But look at how quickly the cotton is soaking up this color. Wow, I'm actually impressed. The, not all of this is below the surface. Um, and I'm curious, we're gonna see the color wick up all the way to the top. I was gonna use a slotted spoon and stick this in, but I have a feeling that this twist might not provide that much resist. Because if the dye is soaking up, soaking up into these areas that do not have any exposure to the dye bath at all, then I would expect that some color might be able to wick through um, this loosely twisted hank. But it is possible that this will help us get some a more tonal yarn from this dye. Well, I'm, I'm not gonna press this at all. I'm actually really, really impressed. That is pretty cool. Um, in just the, what, two minutes that I've been filming so far, and you know, I think that almost all of the bare yarn is, is soaked. It's really functioning very much like a straw. Wow. I think this also shows us right here how slowly this dye binds to the yarn. If the dye struck the yarn quickly, we would see liquid sort of soak up the yarn, but not necessarily dye. Ooh, this is, this has some really, really fun potential. I am, let's just say I am really intrigued and I am currently designing a little experiment in my head as we are setting this up. But nevertheless, I am going to go ahead and let this sit in here for an hour. It has been about 15 minutes and I decided let's go for it. Let's add 100 grams of sock yarn. This is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And unlike the cotton, which I am gently, oh dear, it's getting some more dye on it, gently moving over, uh, you can see that this is not immediately sinking in. Uh, all right. So this was also not pre-soaked. You can see one big, big difference right away in that this yarn does not want to go into solution at all. Um, so I have a feeling that we would see more color variation on this wool nylon blend. Um, as I'm sinking it in, I see some of the area between the twist and that looks very, very white. I know that there will be some more color penetration, but oh, yeah, you can see it too. Uh, interesting. So I guess, it, I wonder if there's a value of how absorbent different fiber types are. Um, certainly, I mean, I guess I knew this about stroll, that it didn't go in so easily. But I think that if I even, yeah, if I even move that a little bit, you can see that we have not had the dye penetrate more than within a couple layers. But as, as the time goes on, this will sink in more. So, how will these two compare? Clearly it's not identical. Whoops, 
because I've had to, you know, they both start off dry, but I've really had to submerge this one a lot more to get it to even stay in our basin. But I have a feeling that we will see more, um, more resist in the stock yarn. But we won't know until it's done. So there's still about, you know, over 40 minutes left that I am planning to wait. Um, I'm not, I haven't decided if I'm going to give this guy some extra time or not. Maybe I should so they each get an hour. But anyway, I will be back in 40 minutes and we'll remove the cotton. There's a point where the dye had sort of stopped. Um, with its movement. But now I am going to remove this twisted hank from the dye bath and we're going to go wash it. Here is our little twisted hank and I'm just going to plunk it in. I just untwisted the hank of yarn and I don't really see any differences from the twist itself. There's really good color penetration within those twists. There's a lot of color coming out. Where I do see a bit of a difference is where the yarn was not submerged all the way. But even so, a lot of color traveled up. I would say that immediately off the back, this does feel paler than the first hank of the same yarn base that I started with. And this did have a tiny bit of stain pigment in it. But rather than feeling black, right now this yarn is feeling more like a navy. It's definitely blue-ish overall. And that's not just because the blue that is rinsing out. Um, I think that you know, maybe there's some yellow hues in the dye and those all stuck to the yarn a bit faster. This is something that you know, we'll have to learn more about as we use these dyes. But I'm pretty excited because this is giving us some information, twofold information. You know, how, you know, does, does the dye bath start to exhaust? How long will you get the deep, intense color? It looks like the recommendation is pretty on target. Even though we still have a lot of color in here, I doubt. This will read as black when I wring it out. Maybe it'll feel a bit charcoal, but we're not in the true black anymore. I'm now gonna add some dish soap. Rinse this out and I will come back. Once the water runs clear, we'll hang this up to dry. And then when the other 20 minutes are up, we will remove the sock yarn from our basin and start washing that one as well. Let's get ready to wash this yarn, but first, yeah, I see there's some white under there. I'm curious, that looks like it's more saturated down there. Interesting. All right, I'm going to use my tongs, try to leave behind as much liquid as I can. Now we're going to go to the sink. that in the sink. Alright. See our cloud of excess dye come. And I know that this color will be less bright than the 100% wool. And I have no idea if the nylon will take up color, the nylon content of this yarn will take up any color at all. Let's unwrap it. Hey, where did those white sections go that I saw? Oh, is that it? Is that the little bit of white that we got? Whoa. Oh, we see more. Okay, we might see more variation as we rinse out this dye, but this is more color penetration in a twisted hank of sock yarn, a dry twisted hank of sock yarn. Then I see with rip dyes, um, I don't think I've tried this specifically with tie dye, 
in this yarn, but certainly acid dyes strike really quickly. Some of it is probably due to the length of time this yarn was in the dye pot. But, so far there's still actually a lot of color in here. Um, I'm seeing something that looks very similar to what I saw with the cotton. Obviously there's still a lot more rinsing to do, but maybe the superwash treatment helps the binding of color. Well, I'm just really surprised because maybe I was just looking at the one spot where there was some white left. And maybe I'll discover something. Oh, I guess if I open this up a bit more, I see some more white in these interior sections. Okay. Uh, but again, I will use some soap here. And we will keep washing this until the water runs clear. Now, I will add that this Dylan dye is not really my favorite because of the amount of washing that I'm needing to do to remove all of this dye. It feels like there's just always like a little bit of bleeding left. But it's actually coming out really quickly from the sock yarn. So maybe that's really the way to go. Here I have 100 grams of DK weight Superwash Merino, Swish DK from Knit Picks. And I am going to add this to a dye vat of some Dylan hand dye in black. Originally, when I mixed up this dye, it was one 50 gram packet of dye in about a total of 15 cups of water, four tablespoons of non-iodized salt, and I've already dyed close to a pound of fiber in this dye. Um, the Dylan dyes say that they are intended to do a half pound of fabric, and I've definitely done more fiber than that. Of course, as time went on, you know, the, the first batch of yarn, we had gray on the wool, we had black, or at least what looks black, on the cotton, and then we got something that was a lot more navy. And now as I'm adding this yarn, we're really starting to get into a low immersion territory. There is no resist here left at all, but I am curious what kind of depth of color we see. This is the fifth skein to be completely submerged in this dye. I mixed the dye a little over two hours ago, a little over two and a half hours ago, if that makes much of a difference but I've been seeing really great color penetration, even on a twisted hank of yarn. Um, and even the first yarns I dyed without a lot of mixing, they seem pretty solid. They might be tonal, but the look, I, looking at them wet with the eye, it's hard to tell how tonal they might be. So, oh, there's still some sticking out down there at that bottom edge. Not that I would mind a pop of white, but I am curious what kind of depth of color we'll get from this third round. Are we still looking navy? So I'm going to let this soak for, I don't know. I don't know if I should do a whole hour or if I should do less time. Maybe I'll go ahead and do an hour because that's what I've done with everything else. And we'll see if what kind of color we're getting and how this compares to some of the other yarn we've done. It has been an hour. Now let's remove our yarn. So I will say there's still a lot of pigment left in this vat. I'm curious to see how much we'll rinse out of our yarn. So let's go wash it. See a lot of bleeding off the bat. You can see I'm seeing a little bad and not wearing gloves anymore. I'm curious just how much color will remain. I mean, I'm rinsing almost directly on the yarn and I'm still seeing a really nice blue. I'm rinsing with cool water 
per the instructions. I think I thought I was wearing gloves and therefore could wring this out a little easier. Uh, some of the rinsing might go faster. I've observed that the, the Superwash wool yarns actually rinsed out a bit faster than some of the cotton. And I think that that has to do with the fact that they don't, they aren't quite as absorbent as the cotton is. Okay. There'll be a fair amount of bleeding for a little while. I'm going to add some Dawn dish soap. This will help us dislodge visual color, but already, already we are seeing a lot less bleeding, which is nice. <laughs> I'm very, very curious how this holds up the other, the other yarn. Now, obviously, this is a blue. This is definitely not a black, not a gray, but it's still a lot more color in yarn. So if you bought, I think if you bought the Dylan dye wanting to get a black, you would run out of that ability pretty quickly. But maybe if we picked another color, say a blue or something, you would continue to get blue, just maybe paler and paler, for a lot longer than what is recommended. It's just I think that if you want an even color over a lot of fabric, then you want to have a lot more dye. But this is looking really even to me. Um, I'm curious, I'm really curious how, and look, this, this water is getting paler and paler. This is a beautiful denim, this is a navy. Um, I think that it certainly could be tonal. I was not moving it around in the vat at all. But having that much dye around and soaking for this long, if the dye absorbs really slowly through the fiber, it gives it time to diffuse through the fiber, which gives a fairly even color. I'm pretty impressed, all things considered. Uh, I don't love the amount of washing that I have to do after using this yarn, or sorry, after using this dye, uh, but this is a beautiful color. Again, not black, but if you just want to play with dyeing yarn and have a yarn you don't like and want to over dye it, this is certainly, certainly a possibility. Um, I'm curious how the yarn will feel after, but I'd say we're pretty much clear. Yeah, these wools are rinsing out a lot better than, or the superwash wools are rinsing out a lot better than the cotton. Um, I'm curious how depth-wise this will compare to the 100% wool. And maybe I need to dye one more hank of 100% wool in this dye bath. I don't really want to dilute it because uh, I, I just want to kind of keep it the same, as close to the same as we can from some of the other, the other projects. But... I think the camera stopped filming at some point, so I'll have to go back and check. But I just, I just added 100 grams of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn to, that was dry to this remaining bit of dye. And you can see that we are just barely have enough to cover it. And now I'm gonna let this sit for an hour. And this is officially going to be the last yarn we dye with this dye bath. But I'm really curious, now that we've dyed so much in here, how will this color compare with the first gray we got on the 100% wool? I can't believe that I wasn't filming for that whole section. But I decided to add this because there's still a lot of color on that swish that we just dyed. And it's really not a fair comparison. It looked like with some of the yarns that I've been dyeing near the end that I've been getting similar tones 
in cotton yarns and these super wash wool blends. So I wanted to go back to where I started with this 100% wool yarn, um, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn, and see where, see how much color we get in this. I'm expecting this one to be paler than some of the others, but it's hard to say. So I'm gonna set a timer for an hour, and then we'll come back and wash our yarn. It has been an hour, and there's still a lot of dye left. And you can see, this one did not take nearly as much color as the superwash wools did. And ironically, this is looking pretty gray still. I am tossing the remaining dye. Whoa, check that out. This took very, very little color at all. Interesting. And it's so much of this is washing out, and with the super wash yarn, that's really not what we saw. I think this is definitely, definitely paler than the first go around. So definitely more of a gray than a blue. I'm adding some soap now. Oh, that's fun. I wonder if, man, this is like a real neutral. This is, this is very, very little color. I wonder now if I had put, you know, if there's a time when wet, when the dye starts to degrade at all. Is that some white? Okay, I would say this is a very blue-gray. Honey, the bucket puts some color. And I think of all of them, this one definitely might have, it's hard to know, maybe it's a soap, might have some more tonal variation compared to all of the other ones that I dyed today with this back. Man, I'm really glad that I decided to put this in after doing that super wash. The super wash has so much color that it wasn't feeling like a good comparison anymore. This is a beautiful, beautiful tone. And I definitely, I definitely see some patches of less color. I mean, there was really low water level, but you know, I even have a bit of a white patch right there. So of all of them, this is the most tonal that we got when we weren't intentionally leaving part of it out of solution. This color is lovely. I mean, again, not black, <laughs> but we've been far from black for a while now. And the other thing is notice how much clearer the water is already compared to some of the videos where I did the cotton and just how much rinsing and rinsing and rinsing that took. Um, it's hard to know there's a lot of color left in here, but the water is pretty clear already. I mean, the dye that wasn't going to stay just rinsed out. So I'm going to keep washing this until the water is completely clear um, and so we don't have any residual bleeding left. So I'm going to hang this up to dry, and we'll take a look at not only the yarn we dyed in this video, but all of the yarn that I dyed with this batch today to think a little bit about the color. Apparently, this dye I've been using is pronounced Dylon, and I've been calling it Dylan. There will be some more mispronunci mispronunciations in upcoming videos, but I'm going to transition to the correct one now. With the first yarns I dyed in the Dylon, it's hard to see if they're really a semi-solid or really close to a true solid. So I decided to try dyeing two different twisted hanks of yarn. The first was 100% cotton, and the second was 75% superwash, 75 superwash merino, 25% nylon. And the amount of blue these absorbed is very similar. This is different to what I saw before when I saw cotton absorb a lot more color than the wool. The other thing I want to note is that this dye seems to absorb fairly slowly and it's able to penetrate really deep into the twisted skeins. 
if I were to be doing this with writ or with food coloring, there would have been a lot more white left behind on this stroll yarn base. As for the cotton, I'm really happy that we now have something that's a bit more of a tonal yarn. I like seeing these variations of hue. I think it gives the final project a lot of depth, and it's one of the qualities I really love about hand-dyed yarn. After I was done with the top two skeins, I decided to add some 100% superwash merino yarn to the dye bath, and we got a brilliant saturated semi-solid navy yarn. Um, maybe it's more of a dark slate blue than a navy, but it still has a lot of color for being the fifth 100 gram skein to go in the yarn. Unlike the two skeins of yarn I dyed first, this one, and it might be a little hard to pick up on video, I can tell that this one is a true semi-solid versus a completely 100% even tone. Not that I know that the other ones were an even tone, but it was hard to tell if there was any semi to those solids. Here we had a low volume of water, we have less dye than we did originally, but overall this coverage is still really even. I'm not sure if this evenness has to do with the salt, the time, slow absorption of the dye. There are many different factors and variables at play. I am really curious to see how this dye performs if we apply some heat to it. I should also point out that while we're getting this really beautiful blue navy color, these are not black and these are not gray. Um, the, the dye that we are using today was black dye. So I think that, you know, that is something to keep in mind if you want to dye a lot of fiber with the Dylon hand dye. Since with the Swish Superwash yarn, we still got so much color, I wanted to see if we would get a similar tone, a similar navy color with the 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And the difference between the non-Superwash wool and the Superwash is striking. I don't think that there was so little dye left behind to account for this color. I think that the superwash treatment really makes it easier for this dye to absorb to the wool yarn. Some of you have asked uh, in the comments of the first Dylon video why I didn't add vinegar. And I didn't include any vinegar because Dylon's website and their packages don't mention the use of vinegar or heat. And in fact, they mention that you should wash it away from heat. Uh, so I think that I, I really wanted to try doing this according to the directions with the dye itself. Additionally, when I've been using the tulip tie dye, the tulip one step tie dye on wool, vinegar didn't really make a difference. So it's possible that with some vinegar and heat, you can increase the tone in your 100% wool yarn, but I won't know this until we try it out. So maybe the Dylon is a nice candidate for some, a little experimentation with the dye setup conditions. I think that this video also demonstrated that it is pretty easy to get a even tone with the Dylon dye. In the final two skeins of yarn, the two on the right, there wasn't a lot of liquid. I didn't do a lot of stirring. I just waited for the recommended amount of time. And the overall tone is nearly solid. Um, there will be some variation. You will see a little bit, potentially a little uh, striping in your knit project, but it's so subtle that it'll give it a beautiful depth. This means that if you wanted to dye some clothing, you could get some really even coverage. Even when I had the yarn twisted into a loose skein, it, it still, the dye penetrated still really deeply. And it really took me applying some resist technique to finally see variation in the depth of tone. 
um, just having the pot be crowded wasn't enough to get the kettle dyed effect. Another thing to note is that this black dye seems to have gone really far. Um, and I'm going to show the first two skeins of yarn that we dyed in a minute. So while the dye went pretty far, black is a deep saturated tone. So I think that if you were starting with, and I'm not familiar with all the colors they offer, but if you're starting with a more medium tone like a grass green or a pink, I'm not sure the dye will go quite as far because there's a big difference in the amount of color saturation between a black and a pink. We certainly dyed over half a pound of fiber with this single packet of black dylon. However, of all of these skeins, these six skeins right here, only one of them is really a true black. Four of them are definitely blue, and it's the first two that were in the pot that really have more of the black and true gray tones. Therefore, I think that if you want to approach the advertised hue, you really want to make sure that you have enough dye around as is recommended on the packet. But if you don't care about the hue a ton and just want to play with color a bit, you can dye a lot more fiber. If we compare the yarn from today's video with the yarn we dyed in our first dye-on video, the first yarn we dyed in this black vat, it really does look like our super wash yarns, so these two right here, take very similar hues to the 100% cotton. And it's the 100% non-super wash wool that both times took a lot less color. Therefore, you can use wool with these dyes, but again, if you want the advertised hue or to get a good saturation of color, you might need to pay attention to your fiber type, and it could be worth it could be worth experimenting with a mini skein before you commit to dyeing enough yarn for your entire project. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I never would have tried Dylon to dye yarn without your suggestions and requests. If you would like to see more of me playing with color and looking at new ways to apply color to yarn, make sure you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release at least two new videos every week and you don't want to miss a thing. If you're already a subscriber and you want to support Chemnitz on a more personal level so I can keep creating content with a wide variety of materials, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can find a link in the video description. Thank you so much for watching!